Hi, this is George Woodbury from the College of the Sequoias in Visalia, California. And in this video, I'm going to go over how to set up Poisson probabilities for students in an intro stats course. Start off with some important items to identify each time. Uh, Poisson problems involve the probability of a certain number of occurrences occurring in a given interval you'll be given an average number of occurrences in an interval of length one and we denote that with the Greek letter lambda. Each problem uh, will be get, involve an interval. We let t represent that interval. The mean for the Poisson distribution is equal to lambda times t. And then we want to write down the number of successes which again like in binomial problems is represented by the letter x. Uh, the formula for Poisson probabilities, the probability of x successes, is e to the negative mu times mu to the x power, all divided by x factorial. So in these problems, we'll go over how to set them up, writing down the important values. I'll also give you some pointers on how to do these by hand, as well as how to do them in StatCrunch. During a typical day at the Student Health Center, 4.2 students will come in complaining of stomach problems. Find the probability that five students will visit the center today to complain about stomach problems. Okay, um, find the probability that five students, gives me my value for x, will visit the center today to complain about stomach problems. Now we know it's not binomial because it's not five out of a given number of students, also, we have no way of knowing what the probability is that any one student comes in for help. Uh, the way we know it's Poisson is we're given a typical number of students that will come in, 4.2 students per day. So lambda is 4.2, and because the problem only involves one day, t will be 1. So if you're working this out by hand, 4.2 and 5 are the two values we need. Again, that's e to the negative lambda, uh, e to the negative mu, negative 4.2, times mu to the x power, 4.2 to the fifth power, all divided by 5 factorial. If you're working in StatCrunch, you enter 4.2 for the mean and equals 5 for x, and the value you're going to come up with in either case. 0.1633. Here's another Poisson problem. We're coming up with the value for x is the hard part. On a typical day, six cats are brought into a low-cost clinic to be spayed. Lambda is six. If the clinic only has enough supplies to spay eight cats, find the probability that this will not be, not be enough for today. T is one. What we have to figure out is what is x. They have enough supplies to spay eight cats. So if zero cats are brought in, they have enough. If one cat is brought in, they have enough. Two cats, three cats, really all the way up through eight cats, they have enough supplies. But if more than eight cats are brought in, like nine or 10 or 11 and so on, they don't have enough supplies. So here, x, is going to be greater than 8. So again, lambda was 6 and t was 1, so mu is 6 times 1 or 6, and we're looking for, lamb for x to be greater than 8. Um, if you're working with stack crunch, it's pretty friendly. Type in 6 for the mean, greater than 8 for x, and you'll have your result. If you're doing this by hand, here's the problem. The values that are greater than 8 are 9, 10, 11, and it goes on forever. There's no upper limit here. So you're going to have to use the complement rule with 0 through 8. Plug in 0, plug in 1, all the way up to 8, add those together, and subtract that sum from 1. Uh, if you use StackCrunch again, this is pretty friendly. The correct uh, answer here, 0.1528.
the number of students absent from a statistics class follows a Poisson distribution with a mean of three students per, absent per day. On a given day, find the probability that. And we've got a few problems to work with here. Uh, lambda is three students per day. The question all asks about a given day, so t is one. That makes mu equal to three times one or three. And in each problem, we have a different value of x to work with. No students are absent, x equals zero. Two, three, or four students are absent, x equals two, three, or four. Six or more students are absent, x greater than or equal to six. Uh, when you uh, working by hand, zero is a one-time use of the formula. Two, three, and four, you plug all three of those in total the results. Greater than or equal to 6 is a little bit of a problem. You're going to have to use the complement rule zero with 0 through 5. Um, if you're using stack crunch, enter the mean 3. For the first one, enter equals 0. The answer there will be 0.0498. Add up 2, 3, and 4 for part B, and you'll get 0.6160. By the way, uh, a second way to do this besides doing 2, 3, and 4 and totaling them, you could find the probability that x is less than or equal to 4, and subtract the probability that x is less than 2. And what that does we start by finding the probability oops, that x is 1, 2, 3, or 4, and then we get rid of the 0 and 1. Finally, greater than or equal to 6 works out to be 0 0.0839. The number of runs scored by a college baseball team follows a Poisson distribution with a mean of 4.4 runs per game. Lambda is 4.4 per game. Find the probability that the team scores exactly 10 runs in the next two games. That means that t is 2. And we're looking for x to be exactly 10 runs, x equals 10. Now, because t is a value that's different than 1, mu will equal lambda times t. And that's where the 8.8 .8 comes from. Uh, think of it this way. If they average 4.4 runs per game, then in two games they should average twice that amount or 8.8. .8. Uh, with stack crunch, 8.8 .8 for mu, 10 for x. Here, if you're doing this by hand, you could just use the formula once. e to the negative 8.8 .8 times 8.8 .8 .8 to the 10th divided by 10 factorial. And either approach will get you this result, 0.1157. Couple to go here. The number of teachers absent in an elementary school follows a Poisson distribution with a mean of 0.3 absences per day. Lambda is 0.3 per day. If the school has two substitute teachers available, find the probability that the school will be understaffed on a given day. Here the question only involves one day, so t is one. And now we've got to figure out what to do with this two. Okay, let's look at it this way. The school has two substitute teachers, one, two. Um, if nobody is sick, this school is not understaffed. If one person is sick, we have a substitute to take that person's place. If two people are sick, we have two substitutes to take their place. But if the third person is sick, now we have a problem. Now the school is understaffed. But it's not just if there are three people out. A fourth person is the same problem and so on. So here, x is anything that is greater than the number of substitutes available, 2. So the mean is 0.3. x is greater than 2. If you're working this by hand, Greater than 2 is 3, 4, 5, and above. The complement is from 0 to 2. So we could plug in 0, 1, and 2 
total those and subtract from one. Um, if we're going by stack crunch, just enter 0.3 for the mean, greater than two for X, and we should find that this result is 0 0.0036. So on 0.36% of the days, this school will be understaffed, meaning that two substitutes will be enough nearly all of the time. All right, one last problem. For a typical flight from Las Vegas to New York, three travelers don't show up. Lambda equals three. Typical, usual, average. If the airline overbooked a flight by five passengers during advanced sales, find the probability that they will have enough seats for this flight. Okay, so one flight means that T is one. And let's go with a little uh, bad art here. We've got an airplane and we've got a lot of people inside, but we have five people that are stuck outside the plane. They don't have a seat, in other words. So if there are zero no-shows, these five people are out of luck, and that doesn't meet the event we're looking for, that they have enough seats. If one person doesn't show, that person's in, but we still don't have enough seats. If four people don't show, we still don't have enough seats because there's going to be one person left outside. But once we have five no-shows, every passenger that didn't have a seat will now have a seat. That means that the, the, um, they have enough seats for the flight. But it's not just five no-shows, because you could have six or seven or more. Anything where there are at least five no-shows, x greater than or equal to five, will mean that they have enough seats for this flight. So mu is three, x is greater than or equal to five. If you try this one by hand, greater than or equal to five is five or above. The complement is probably the way to go here from zero up through four. Total that up, subtract from one. However, using stack crunch, again, pretty friendly. Three for the mean, greater than or equal to five for x. And your final answer here, sorry Regis, is 0.1847. If you have questions on these problems or comments, or if you've got a request for a different video I can put together for you on YouTube, you can reach me through the contact page on my website, and the address there is georgewoodbury.com. Thanks and good luck.